Hello, I'm Renee Barron from Martha and Me, and today I'm going to teach you how to make a granny square. To start, we'll need our yarn. I'm using a larger than normal yarn, but I want this to be very clear for demonstration purposes. I also have a large hook. You'll need a hook, but you will decide what size hook you want by looking at the yarn you select and reading on the back of that skein the size uh, hook you'll need. And you'll need a scissor and you'll need a needle with a very large eye so that we can weave in the ends later on. Now the first thing we really need to know is how to hold our hook. And there are two ways to hold the hook and both of them equally good. I prefer the knife method. I find it easier for my hands, my wrists. I have a little bit of arthritis and I don't like the fact that it tires my hand out to use the other method. So I use the knife and that method I put my palm over the handle, my three fingers go around, my pointer finger goes along the shaft of the hook and it just helps guide it and just be a little firmness and then my thumb just anchors right here on the top of the handle. So that's a really comfortable hold for me and I like that one a lot. You'll see me use that during this video. But the other hold, the knife, uh, I'm sorry, the pencil hold is equally, uh, if this is more uh, comfortable for you, it's equally as legitimate to use this hold. And you just hold it like a pencil, like I would be writing my name right here. And many people find this hold is the best for them. But as I said, I will be using the knife hold. We need to be wary of how we hold our yarn as well because our hand that holds the yarn controls the tension. And we don't want the yarn just to, to, to flow freely because it'll be too loose and we don't want anything dragging that back because it'll be too tight. So you want just a, just a gentle little pressure, just a gentle little drag on the yarn and to do that I find that the easiest way is this way. And so I put my hand, palm up, I scoop in through the yarn, and when it's in between my little finger and my ring finger, that's where I want it, then I turn my hand over so my palm is down, and I take my pointer finger and I scoop that underneath the yarn. So this is what it looks like on the back of my hand, and this is what it looks like on the palm of my hand. And then when I'm crocheting and the crochet action pulls the yarn, it's just a gentle little drag on that yarn just to keep it nice and taut, gently taut. And that's something you're gonna to have to practice and get the feel of, but I find that the easiest way. So let's go over that a couple times. Palm up, scoop in and get that yarn in between that little finger and the ring finger. Turn your hand over and then take that pointer finger, scoop under the yarn and when you turn your hand perpendicular in the crochet position, you'll have a nice drag on the yarn. One more time and then we'll move on. Palm up, scoop in, turn your hand over, scoop just the pointer finger under and you have what looks like this on the back of your hand and this on the front of your hand. And that will help you quite a bit. Then the next thing we need to know is how to do a slip stitch, slip knot um, more accurately. So this is hard for some people. I never learned it, but this is an easy way I find to do it. Take your hand palm up again. Take the tail end of the yarn and lay it over your palm and I leave about three or four inches hanging down and then I take the working end that is the end that's attached to the ball and I take it one more time around my finger so that when I turn my hand up I have two loops on the on my finger. I take the back loop and put it over the front loop and then I take the loop that's in the back now and I pull it under I'm sorry I pull it over the front loop and my finger. And then I have a slip knot. It's great. 
Perfect slip knot. Okay, let's try that again. I have my palm up. I put the yarn in my palm with three or four inches hanging out. I take the working end of the yarn, go one loop around. Then I take that back loop, pull it over the front loop. Take the loop that's in the back now, put it over both of them. And I have a slip knot. Let's go in closer for our last time. I have my palm. I have the yarn end of the, I'm the tail end of the yarn, as you can see, tail end of the yarn. Then I take that yarn, go around my finger once. I take the back loop, go over the front loop. Oops, sorry, over the front loop. Then I take the loop that's the back one now, take it over both the front loop and the end of my finger. And it makes a beautiful little slip knot. Okay. Now, if you've got your slip knot, you can just put your crochet hook right in there. If you need a little more help with that, just rewind this video and go back over there. You'll find once you get it, it's just easy peasy. You'll love it. Now to start the granny square we're going to make, we're going to use the chain stitch method because it's much easier to learn. And you go in there and get your hand in your proper position. And then with my tall finger and my thumb, I pinch the knot, the slip knot that we've got on there. And I make sure that my hook slips in and out and we have nice teardrop shape loop on our crochet hook. And then we'll be ready to go. I take my crochet hook, I use the, this method and it makes it easy for me to push down on the crochet hook push back, pull it back up, and I have captured some yarn. That's called yarn over. And then I can pull it through that teardrop and that's one chain. Let's get a little closer so you can see that a little better. So my shaft of my crochet hook is about parallel to my yarn and I go down, back, up, grabbing that yarn and pull it through my loop and that makes two. Down, back, up, grabbing the yarn, pull it through that loop and that makes three. Down, back, up, grabbing the yarn, pull it through the loop and that makes four. Down, back, up, grab the yarn, pull it through the loop, that makes five. Back up, grabbing that yarn, pull it through the loop, and that makes six. Now I'm going to stop here because I want you to look at the structure of these stitches. I will have a bigger chain, a bigger string of chains uh, than you will because I'm using a larger yarn than you will. But I want you to be able to see this even on your smaller yarn, your thinner yarn, you'll see V's. These V's are the chain stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six. In just a second, we're going to ask you to put your hook through the first stitch, first chain stitch in that line, and you'll need to know where that is. There is a slip stitch, a knot for a slip stitch. You don't want to go into that. So it's imperative that you know what the, each of these stitches look like. And they look like V's. You can count the bumps if it's easier for you. One, two, three, four, five, six. You can count the V's like we did. Or you can count the other side. One, two, three, four, five, six. However you do it, just make sure that you can recognize those stitches so that you can count it when it's necessary. So here we go. I said we were going to take our crochet hook. We're going to, what we want to do is make a circle here. So we're going to hook the last stitch we just did with the first stitch. So I'm going to take my crochet hook and I'm going into that first 
stitch. I hold on to that, I yarn over, pull it through that stitch, and pull it through the stitch that is on the crochet hook. And that is how we get our circle. And so we're going to be going into this circle on each stitch now. And I'm going to be making four clusters of three double crochets. We're going to learn double crochets for this. And I want you to see what that's going to look like. This is our first layer. And we have, let me get something to point with here. We have three double crochets. Then we have to have a bridge to make a corner. And then we have three more double crochets, bridge to make a corner, three more double crochets, our bridge to make the corner, and our last cluster of three double crochets with the bridge to make the corner. So we have four clusters of three double crochets and we have four chain two corners. So that's what we're going to be making right now. Okay, we have our ring. Sometimes it doesn't look like a ring. Sometimes you think, whoops, where's the ring? Where's the stitch? So right now, find your ring because that's what you're going to go in. Now we have to start this with three double crochets. I'm sorry, with three chains. So we'll just do our three chains. One, two, three. And we count that as our first double crochet because we have to get out here a ways so we have room for the height of the double crochets. So that is counted as our first double crochet. And now we're gonna make our first actual double crochet. And we do that by doing the yarn over. And remember how we did the yarn over? Just like the start of our chain stitch. Down, back, up, grabbing that yarn. But instead of coming and pulling through our loop, we're going to go into the circle. If you notice, I have my tail dragging across my chain because we're going to enclose our tail as well as our chain as we do these stitches. So I yarn over again, pull it up, and now you'll see that I have three loops. I want to do yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. That's our first actual double crochet, but it is our, we're counting that as our second and you'll see why it'll become clear. Double crochet again, that'll be our third double crochet. Yarn over, into our circle. Yarn over, we have three loops. Yarn over, pull through the first two and yarn over and pull through the second two. Now this looks a little floppy here, but you'll see it'll become quite tidy and neat as we go along. So we have our first cluster of double crochets and now we need to make that bridge for the corner and we do that by chaining two. Chain one, chain two. Now, we're just going to keep on going. We need the next cluster of three double crochets. Yarn over, into the circle, yarn over, pull it up. We have our three loops, yarn over, go through two, yarn over, go through two. Yarn over, into our circle, yarn over, Yarn over, go through two. Yarn over, go through two. Yarn over, into the circle. Yarn over. Yarn over, go through two. Yarn over, go through two. Now, I'm talking and counting, and what happens if I lose count? So I can just go back here and, and feel and see, okay, there's a double crochet, 
there's a double crochet, there's a double crochet, and here's my two chains that were my bridge. So two chains and three double crochets, it's time to do another bridge, which is two single crochets. Single crochet, single crochet. Now we need another cluster of three double crochets. Yarn over into the circle, yarn over, pull through, we have the three loops, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, into the circle, yarn over, three loops, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, into the circle, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Okay, so I have my three posts, my three double crochets, I call them posts sometimes, and that is three clusters. So remember we needed four clusters, so I needed my bridge to be a corner, so I'm gonna single crochet two, single crochet, second one okay now you might have to scoot it through this circle to give yourself room to make the last three double crochets so yarn over into the circle yarn over we have our three loops yarn over pull through two yarn over pull through two yarn over into the circle Yarn over, three loops, yarn over, go through two, yarn over, go through two. Yarn over, go into the circle, yarn over, there's three loops, yarn over, go through two, yarn over, go through two. And we have now our four clusters of three double crochets. So we need our last little bridge, our last little corner. So let's single crochet twice again. Single crochet, single crochet. That's, I shouldn't say single crochet. Those are chain stitches. I hope I haven't confused you. Those are chain stitches. All right. Now, this doesn't look like what we're supposed to look like, does it? We need to join this. So we're going to join this by going into the top stitch of that three chain stitches we did to begin. And here's one, there's, there's the second post. So this here, it looks very funny sometimes, so you have to be careful. This is our three chain stitches. And there's the top one. So we want to go in here, and as all we're doing is pulling the yarn through, pulling the yarn through, the same yarn, so that it just joins it. And then we are going to do a kind of a faux chain stitch, just to get the start of the chain stitch, pull it through, but pull it through big, big, big loop, because all we're going to do is tie a knot with this. And we have a handy way to do that. Cut that off, give it a lovely long tail, and then when you pull this tight, it makes a knot. So we have our three, 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 and our four corners. And when we get the next layers around there, it'll really start forming a lovely, lovely granny square. But we look at this, we've got this big hole in the middle but we were smart we crocheted over that tail and so as all we have to do is find the tail in the back and pull you pull tight 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 as you can you're not going to break the yarn pull it tight and look at that you have what looks like a magic circle without all the frustration of a magic circle it's beautiful Okay, now on this row, on this round, I'm going to show you how to weave the ends in 
and we won't take any video time doing that on the next rounds but I just want to show you how to do that so you're gonna to have to thread this needle even though it's a big eye you need to pull up on your this is a good way to get it to fit smush it there till it's flat and then you can easily thread that needle this tail end yarn isn't bad because we've actually crocheted over it the point of weaving in is to hide this loose yarn plus to make sure it doesn't come loose you're gonna put this in a blanket or a purse or I don't know what you're gonna make with your granny square but it's gonna be washed it's gonna be handled and you don't want this to come loose so we get to go back at least once on the tail we I like to go in three different directions for weaving in but on this one since we've already done one direction by crocheting it in we just have to do an, another one or two and I scoot under the thread you want to make sure you're not going through a thread it can make a big mess you have plenty of room under the threads so pull through there Go around a little ways and I shimmy my needle back and forth just to make sure I'm not in the middle of a thread that I'm under th threads and pull it tight not too tight as to distort it but tight enough and I think that's enough for this for the tail end we'll have to be a little more thorough on the other one because it hasn't been crocheted in and we're working on the back because we want our front to look pretty so again I want to make sure that thread is flat so that I can thread it through that eye now this time we don't have a close place that we can hide this we have to get down to this nice this is a nice area to hide it in but we need to get down there we don't want this thread hanging over and look tacky so just eyeball it and see where you can go in and out and in and out And this serves to kind of hide the little knot you've just made as well okay let's come down this post okay see it's hidden you, don't, you can't really see that at all let's get here's another we can go to so we're just zigzagging back and forth back and forth trying to get down to these threads that cover it a little bit more nicely here we go so that was one direction now I'm going here to the left so this would be another direction be sure not to go into the thread be sure you go and you can test it out by moving You want to be sure you've got room to move okay now let's go back the other way that'll be a third direction and be sure to skip one so you don't unravel what you've just done I think that's good now pull it tight without distorting and when you cut that off it'll bounce back into the and here the front of your granny square is ready to go 
So our next color is yellow and we're adding this to our blue exactly how we did this one. So it's easy to add a piece of color, another color yarn, and we're going to add it at the corner. It doesn't matter which corner. We're going to get your crochet hook and your yarn, maybe six inches of a tail, and we're going to go into the corner and grab that yarn, pull it in, and using both the tail and the working yarn, we're going to make one chain stitch. And that's going to anchor it right in there. And then you can drop the tail. We'll just be crocheting with the working yarn now, not the tail. And we're going to start again with three chain stitches. One, two, three. Now in each corner, we're going to put two clusters of three double crochets. And we again, we count this chain three as a double crochet. So now I'm going to do my second double crochet. Yarn over into the corner, yarn over, three loops, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, into the corner, yarn over, I got my three, pull through two, pull through two. And that's three, because remember, we had the chain three and we've done two double crochets. So this is a corner and it's going to be a corner for the next round as well. So we need to chain two to give it a little bridge for the corner. Chain two and then do three more double crochets in this same corner. Yarn over into that same corner, yarn over, pull through to have three loops, yarn over, go through two, yarn over, go through two, yarn over into that same corner, yarn over till you have three loops, yarn over, go through two, yarn over, go through two, yarn over in that same corner, yarn over, go through two, go through two. Now we're going to go to this next corner. We're not going to have any bridge. We're just going to go straight into that corner. Yarn over into the next corner. Yarn over, pull through. We have three. Yarn over, go through two. Yarn over, go through two. The shimmy sometimes to get them to go through there. That's why it's so important to keep your tension nice. Yarn over, go into that same corner, over, through two, yarn over, go through two, over, over, go through two, yarn over, go through two. Now I've got three double crochets. I want to chain two from my corner. Chain one, chain two. And I'm going to get three more double crochets in the same corner. Yarn over, go through the corner, yarn over, go through two, yarn over, go through two, over. One more. You can see this goes fast as you get used to this rhythm. All right, now I've got my second double cluster of three double crochets and my corner bridge. 
So we're going to go into the third corner and we're just going to go directly to it. Yarn over into that corner there. Yarn over, pull through to make three, pull through two, pull through two. Yarn over, same corner, yarn over, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over into that same corner, two, yarn over, over, pull through two. I've got a cluster of three in that corner. I need my bridge now. Chain two, chain one, chain two. And I'll do my second cluster of three. Yarn over that same corner, pull through, pull through two, pull through two, yarn over to that same corner, yarn over, pull through two, pull through two, same corner, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, pull through two. Okay, we've got that third corner crocheted nicely. We need to get into the fourth corner. And here we go. We're not going to have a bridge. We're just going to go directly to it. Yarn over into that corner. Pull through two. Pull through two. Yarn over into that same corner. Through two. Yarn over into that corner. So I have my first cluster of three. Give myself a little room here. And I'm going to make my bridge of a chain two. And do my last little cluster of three double crochets. Yarn over into that same corner. Pull through two. Yarn over corner, yarn over, yarn over, pull through two, pull through two, yarn over into that same corner, yarn over, yarn over, pull through two, pull through two. And I have all of my chain double crochets, I should say, and I don't need to chain anymore. I just need to join these two together. So I do that by just slip stitching into the top of my chain, the top chain here. And we're gonna make sure we get in the right place. And as all I do is pull, we're not stitching here really, we're just pulling through, we're just fastening. And there it is. And just like we did last time, we also have to make a knot. So we pretend like we're gonna do a chain stitch, but we just keep going, pull a big hole, big loop, pull it and make a knot. Now normally I would stop and I would weave in the ends, but we won't do that because we're demonstrating here and we'll just keep on going. So, take this one and green will be our next color. We're going to join it just the same way. We're going to stick our crochet hook into that corner. We're going to pull the green through. And we're going to do one chain just to fasten the colors together. And now we're fastened, we can drop the tail. And start crocheting normally. Now we're going to do the three, chain three. One, two, three. And we're gonna do the same thing here. We want two clusters of three double crochets in each corner 
the only thing that's changed changed on this is there now is a hole right here and that will just take one cluster of three double crochets and let me show you what I mean by that so this is just normal this is a corner we're gonna have our two clusters of three double crochets we count this chain three as one so let's do the second one So I have three because I count my uh, three chains there as, as a double crochet and so I need to have my bridge for the corner so I chain two and then in the same space the same corner I'm going to do three more double crochets. Yarn over, go into the corner, yarn over pull through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Okay, I have three double crochets, a chain two and three double crochets. So now I'm going to go into this space here that we made. So it's it, we don't have a bridge or anything. The only bridge we're ever going to have is in those four corners. So we're just going to go right to it. We're going to yarn over into that opening. Yarn over, pull through. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over into that opening. Yarn over, yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two. Our last one there, yarn over, into the opening, yarn over, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And now we're going to come upon the next corner. So here again, we're going to have a cluster of three double crochets, two chain stitches for the bridge, and another cluster of double crochets. So let's just go right into it. Sometimes you'll see me stop and count again because I've lost track. Okay, I've got my first three double crochets. It doesn't hurt to confirm that you're doing it right because you don't want to have to go back and rip it out. So now I have to do my bridge, my two chain stitches, and now we'll do our last cluster of three. Pull through two, pull through two, yarn over into that same corner, yarn over, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And now again I have that newly appearing hole there and we're not going to make a bridge, we're just going to go right into it with three double crochets. That happens sometimes, but that's okay. You just go back to the next completed stitch. Yarn over into that opening, yarn over, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over into that opening, yarn over, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. So I've completed the three double crochets there for that cluster. Now I'm going to go right into this corner. No bridge or anything, just right directly into the corner with our double crochets. You're going to be so good at double crochets when you get done with this. So 
So I have my first cluster of three. So I'm going to make my bridge of chain two. And then my next cluster of double crochets. Two more. And the last one in this corner. Yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. We're going to go to the next opening, yarn over, into that opening, yarn over, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, into the opening, yarn over, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. One more there. Okay, we completed our three in that opening. We have the last corner here. And we will just go directly to it. No bridge at all, because it's not yet time for the corner. Now, this is my first cluster. Time to make my bridge. Just two chain stitches. And back to three double crochets. One more. You'll catch me going back and looking because I can't remember while I'm talking. Okay, I finished that corner where we have this medium, medium or half the way over, I should say, not medium. And we'll go and do our three in there. Oop. One. two, three. And we join it the same way we did the others. We'll take the top of the chain three and just do a slip stitch and then we will do a knot by starting a chain stitch. And we have that round. Okay. Let's do our next color, which is that lilac pink, which I loved. Sorry about that. Okay, we're gonna do the exact same thing. This time, you're gonna see, we're gonna do the two clusters of, well, look on this completed one. We do the two clusters of three double crochets, our little bridge, and then two clusters. Every corner is the same. We didn't change from the very beginning. Two clusters of three double crochets with a bridge in between. And then each opening we come to, we do a cluster of three double crochets. So on this round, we have two openings. So we will do two um, separate clusters in there if that makes sense to you, I hope. All right, change our colors by sticking through any corner, grabbing hold of your last color, and using both those ends, you're going to do a chain stitch, just to anchor it. Pull it tight and drop that tail. And you'll just keep, oops, you'll just keep on going with this color. 
and so we're going to do two we're going to do two clusters joined by a two single crochets in each corner and in these interim holes we're going to do just three double crochets so I'm just gonna go through this oops I'm sorry we're good we chain three to start I don't want to confuse you chain one chain two chain three that serves as our very first double crochet Our bridge whoops my yarn doesn't want to cooperate Okay, one more. I have to count when I lose track. Okay, we'll go into the first side hole here without any bridge. And just go right to the double crochets. the next hole with our double crochet okay now we have the next corner Excuse me while I get more yarn. Okay, one more in that cluster. And now my bridge of two single or two chain stitches. And back to the next cluster of double crochet. I've seen people make a granny square using the same colors. I've seen them make granny squares out of random colors. I've seen people make granny squares out of uh, coordinating colors, uh, just alternating uh, the color they start with and proceeding that way. There's just so many things you can do with granny squares. Um, blankets, um, purses, fanny packs, um, vests, sweaters. Granny squares are very comfortable to work with because you can just carry them wherever you go and just do a granny square here and a granny square there and you don't have to carry around a huge big project. Are you expert at granny squares by now? Or 
expert at double crochet you might be by the time you get done with this one granny square so I have my three in there so okay yarn over we'll review yarn over into the corner yarn over whoops see I did something wrong didn't I let's go back this is a good lesson let's go back to the last one I know I did right and I had two double crochets there so we need one more there this is where I went wrong somehow I was talking and I didn't do it correctly that's okay you can pull it out go back to the last one you did right okay now let's start the corner yarn over into the corner yarn over pull through yarn over through two yarn over through two yarn over into the corner yarn over yarn over through two yarn over through two Now ready for my bridge. I've got my three. see where I am oh I have one more double crochet in this corner and that will be my completed my second cluster of three so here I have these little small ones on the side that just take one cluster of three and you could just keep on going like this adding 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 just remember the corners take two clusters of three joined by the two chains and then those side ones side openings just have a cluster of three and you can just go on forever you could make a whole blanket one giant granny square if you would like Okay, we're ready for this corner. Yarn over, go at the corner, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, go through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, into the corner, yarn over, you get three loops, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. I have one of my clusters, so I need to do my bridge for the corner. Two chains. Then I'll do my last cluster of three in that corner. Do you see how easy it is when you use this um, knife method to turn your your hook and get into the hole and I just find that for me so much easier than the pencil method. There we go. Got that one done. Now we're just going to have our two side ones. Next opening, three double crochets for each opening, two, and the third double crochet. All right, 
Now, we've done all the crocheting we need to do. We just need to join together. And I go into the top of that three chain leg and join it. And then I want to knot it now. So I'm going to do a chain, but I'm going to pull it through. And that's how I'm going to tie my knot. And now I have my completed granny square. I'll show you the one that I've already woven in all the ends. And this would just join to the next one and join to the next one and join to the next one to make anything you want to make. And I hope you have enjoyed your granny square tutorial and that you will make granny squares from now on and you can you've learned chain stitch you've learned slip stitch you've learned the slip knot and you've learned a double crochet see you next time